And joining us now is the executive director of Honest Reporting and former Jerusalem Post analyst, my favorite all-time political analyst, Gil Hoffman. <laughs> Good to see Thanks, you. Steve. Good to see you, Gil. So, the softened version of judicial reform was presented to Likud for, uh, for approval last night. It was approved. Do you expect it will swell the protests? Uh, or No. No, okay. Can you, uh, can you exa <laughs> no, elaborate? Steve, the, protests are going to, yeah, the, the protests are going to go on and only become more intense, even though they uh, already agreed to back down in the coalition from every step in the reform plan for now, except for the Judicial Selection Committee. Uh, but the way the protesters see it is uh, that's the meat. Uh, that they've been protesting against for so long. It's the takeover of the Supreme Court. It's taking away the only check and balance left in, in Israeli politics. Um, if this softened version of the bill passes, then there'll be two very right-wing judges who will be chosen to the Supreme Court, one of whom would probably become the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, who would then have power over the court's agenda, um, and decide which judges will hear appeals, including possibly the appeal of the prime minister himself in his own court case, um, they still believe that they have plenty to be upset about. During the Likud caucus uh, last night to discuss whether or not they approve of the new version of, of the bill or the one that will go forward to the Knesset, we finally got to hear some of the Likud ministers that hadn't said a word until now, there was some indication of, 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 of Nir Bakat's uh, uh, opinion at the moment, and also uh, uh, Gallant. Do you believe that there's that much opposition in Likud, both uh, for and against this proposal? We've been hearing a lot of different, different ideas. The last time there was real serious opposition in Likud was with, while that map uh, that you saw with Israel Medad was still relevant. You know, it, the Likud has had the same four leaders for 80 years, and uh, they are not a party that decapitates them, unlike other parties that there have been. And uh, so uh, Barakat and Gallant, for their own public, uh, the, in Gallant's case, the generals, and in Barakat's case, the high-tech people, they made a point uh, of letting them know that even behind closed doors, they fight for them. Well, uh, fighting for them doesn't really help when they don't really do something serious, like uh, quit or even threaten to quit. Um, and uh, so it, it's just to have their protests on paper and get their constituents uh, off their backs. So you don't believe, uh, that, you don't believe that Gallant's going to resign uh, over this issue? Gallant got his dream job. He's the Minister of Defense. Uh, Netanyahu remains the leader of the Likud with an iron fist, and he can do whatever he wants, and, and passing this part of the reform appears to be what he wants more than anything. Now, Barkat said something interesting. He said that if this law passes and it goes to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court in the Bagats throws it out, um, Yariv Levine, on the one hand, has been saying, we won't accept it. But Nir Barkat says, yes, we will accept whatever decision the Bagats makes. If they don't accept the law, go back to the drawing board. What would Levine do? I think that this demonstrates the, the serious problem that there is right now. Because really, what would happen if the law backed up by the judges say to do one thing and, and the government says to do something else. What does not only a minister like Barkat, but a, an IDF officer in the field, a, a police officer, what, what do they do? That's the constitutional crisis that those trying to still seek a compromise from the president on down are trying to avoid. So uh, Barkat saying that he would obey by the law, uh, I think, um, made a statement to his constituents even more. Uh, but Steve, did he quit? No, he has he not. Not yet. So I, I don't see him quitting anytime soon. So, Gil, so in your opinion, let me try to be a prophet for a moment. We're going to reach April 2nd. <laughs> the laws will have passed in the Knesset. We may or may not have a decision from a Bagatz by that time, but it will be within a, f a matter of days from that point. Bagatz throws it out. What happens then, on that day? 
it, the Knesset is not in session, so it can't even react. We have uh, the very definition of uh, the perhaps untranslatable Hebrew word of, uh, of Balagan, uh, the uh, biggest mess imaginable. And uh, we all need to hope and pray that it doesn't get there. By Balagan, basically, basically you're saying a constitutional crisis. Is that the definition of the word Balagan in this case? Constitutional crisis is realistic now, and uh, it's the prime minister uh, who needs to be there. Uh, he's already facilitated one compromise. Perhaps there's still one more in order to fix this thing. There's been some speculation that we may be reaching that bang on the table moment early next week. Do you anticipate that? Next week is the last week before the Knesset goes on its recess. Um, all along, I've been saying on this show not to pay any attention to any of the bills passed in their preliminary readings, their first readings. The final reading is what passes into law and what matters. All right. Thank you very thank much, you. Uh, Gil Hoffman, and good luck to you. Happy holiday.